say is called what the fancy people would say is eschatology is the last stage of the end of the age. And uh, is my mic on? Good. Okay. And the end of the age is scary to the world when they talk about the end of things. But for you and me, we living for that day. And I want you to really think about this because I don't want you to think that you can go anywhere in this world, be doing anything, and miss Jesus. You won't. Because he's going he gonna to take you out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all you have to do is what we've been teaching is keep that cross ever before you. And I want you to focus on it, desire it more than anything. And then on top of that, I want you to remember this. Go about your business, keeping God ever before you. Take up the cross and follow him. And when he comes, you won't miss him. He's going to take you. Hallelujah. Now, some people call it the rapture. I don't want to label anything. I'm just telling you that the day will come when God will take you. So you're not going to miss him. He's not going to forget you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So our message today is called Take It. I want you to start thinking of yourself any day that you can be taken. Because no man knows the day or the hour. So you need to be prepared that he could come and get you at any time. Did you think that you have to go and wait for him somewhere? Or go to some wild place and find him? No, that's not how it goes. That is not how it goes at all, is it? The way the Lord does it, the Lord's going to take you. You don't have to wait at the bus stop. You don't have to. He's going to come at the right time, and he's going to take you out of here. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that so that you can have that focus as we prepare for communion and get ready for some praise and worship after, after we do the communion. But I want you to focus on that that any day now he can come. And you can see how easy it is to be deceived. It is so easy to be deceived in this world. Just think uh, how people really believe lies today. How easy. You know, a lie is the state of your heart. Because if your heart's not right, you believe anything. God taught us to love. But if you don't walk in love, the liar can come, can you? But you can see in this world we live in now how difficult it is. Pandemics, all the things, Ida. So we know that some signs are already here that Christ could be coming. But today I want to talk to you about taking. Say taking. Taking. You know, Jesus went up. He wasn't taken. You know, the last days we're going to be taken out of here according to the scriptures. And in Matthew 24, we're going to first read at verse 40. Y'all ready? I was doing all that talking to you. I discerned what the Lord, the Lord wanted me to do, y'all. Yes. So we're going to go on with this message, okay? Yes. Hey, look. Verse 36. But about that day, if you're there, about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, no, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came, and he took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch. Listen. All of Matthew 24 is about that day. And we're going to go over some of it today. But what I want you to see is that you're going to be going about your business and, and doing what you normally do. But suddenly you might be taken. But somebody else is going to be left behind. And you're not going to look back because the Lord told you you don't want to be like Lot's wife and looking back because you won't be worthy of the kingdom of God. See, that means you live your life looking for the great hope all the time. When that day comes, 
The Bible says it won't surprise you like it does the world because every day you've been waiting. I want you to practice this. We, I don't know why God gave me this today, but I want you to practice it. I want you to anticipate his coming and don't live your life like he's not. But go on about your business, even in Noah's day. Only Noah knew exactly what was about to happen, didn't he? See, God didn't surprise Noah with the flood. Noah wasn't building that big boat for nothing. You're not coming to church and searching for God and reading your Bible and pressing in for nothing. No, the world is out there going on about their business just like in Noah's day. They're having parties, getting married, doing everything as if they got a future. But when that day comes, you won't be surprised. I know people say you're going to be surprised. You're not going to be because you're looking for him every day. You don't love this world so much till you don't think there's a heaven. Your hope is not in this world. Listen, it, trust me, if you think your hope is here, I got some work to do. You know, when I came back to my house uh, and saw how bad it is right now, we're sleeping upstairs. Some of us are worse than that. We're not even back in our house. And we see the inconvenience. We know how temporal things are. We built this church like we thought it would never get to this point. But look what we're looking at. Things change and things happen in this earthly world. But if your hope is in the temporal things and not in the thing that is permanent in heaven stored up for you, you're going to be greatly discouraged Amen. about losing a house, yeah. or about losing uh, uh, blocks off your church or whatever. You're going to be greatly discouraged. But see, when your hope yeah. is in heaven, yeah. you know these things you can overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He said, take up your cross and follow him. Yes. We talked about that last week, about the passion for the cross. He told you already, constantly think of him and what he did so that that path to heaven, that narrow path, you can keep walking on. But don't be surprised about the world. Yes. What Jesus said is going to come to pass. When you get taken up, don't look back. Because it'll be just like Lot's wife. She turned a grain of salt, if you don't remember it. And she shouldn't have looked back. But today, we ain't looking back no more. We're looking forward. Yes. Look how far God has brought you. Yes. He didn't bring you this far for to let you down. He knows your weaknesses, like we said was teaching today. He knows the number of hairs on your head. So he's preparing a place for you in heaven. Yeah. Not down here. Yeah, he's preparing you to be where he is. Yeah. In my father's house, he said, there are many mansions. Today, I want you to refocus. Yes, you keep the cross before you, because the cross is your ticket. You ain't getting to heaven without that ticket. So I always keep it before me so that when I slip and I fall and I make a mistake or I, I look the wrong way, I got the cross to atone for my sin. So I can keep on going and keep that hope alive that I'm on my way and on my journey to heaven. I may fall sometime, but the cross is ever before me. And the blood of Jesus will wash me. I will not fail. But when that day comes, one will be going about his business right next to you, working on your job, your neighbor next door. But when Christ comes, he's going to take you. I hate the words left behind because you know what? That's not the intent of God at all. He wants every man to be saved. But because you believe when the hour comes, Jesus doesn't know it, pastors don't know it, popes don't know it, but the Father in heaven knows it. So you have to be prepared for that. That's why that last verse we just read, therefore keep watch. Just listen, he's telling the apostles that 2,000 years ago to keep watch. Now how long that's been, they've been watching. And you, you can't watch just a few days. A few weeks. This world gets so busy with all that we can do. But don't you get too busy where you're not waiting on God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen, I got a good definition for taking. And you know, I always like to give de definitions. It says, lay hold of something with one's hands. Grab it. Take it. Reach for it and hold it. So he's not just taking you and going to throw you back. He's going to reach for you and hold you. That's why the scripture says you've been taken. You've been taken. Hallelujah. You haven't been taken with a drag net. You haven't been taken with a, with a uh, what's this, drag line or some kind of uh, big thing come out of heaven like a spaceship and grab you. No, it's the hand of God. Going to lift you up out of here. Hallelujah. So that you can be where he is. Today is a day that you need to say, well, what are, the apostles want to know, what are these signs? Of the, of not, they don't want to know when they're going to be taken. They want to know, when is it you're coming back? See, Jesus is making it clear, I'm going to die and I'm going to, I'm going back where I came from, but I will be back. They knew that much by now in chapter 24. So the question is, they want to ask, and we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Y'all ready? See, the Jews had confidence in their great temple. It's a beautiful place. Some people think Herod's temple was beautiful. We know Solomon's was. And some people think Herod built this beautiful place, and it had all these big pillars and, and all these big stones in it. And the Jews had pride in that, that you know, this is, this is the foundation of who they are. They, they don't expect that nothing's going to move them because the temple is still standing. Now, if you had confidence in this church that it was still standing, you got a little disappointed when I came out. Well, they're about to get disappointed too because Jesus pretty much told them, you know what? Not one stone will be left on this place upon another. So the apostles were like, oh, this must be the end because they didn't say, oh, Jesus don't know what he's talking about. What you mean by that? No. They ask him questions, but they know what he said he means. Hallelujah. See, we should never read the word like maybe God doesn't mean what he's saying. He means exactly what he says. Hallelujah. Right? Right. So the apostles knew, uh-oh, this thing is going to end. So now the question they ask in chapter 24, verse 1 is, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So they're not saying it's not going to happen. But they know if this temple not here, then we ain't here. So when is it that you're coming? What is the sign of your coming? Because we know that you're not going to leave us like this. We know you've got to be coming back if that's going to happen. And he truly has already taught them that he had to die. But he was coming back. And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Oh, I wish you can read some history to know how many people came here in this world since Christ and said they were the Christ. And we read about some of them like Jim Jones and all those people and David Koresh and uh, all those things. But there have been more than that. They started religions. In 600 or so AD, Muhammad came along. He had a vision. And he had a whole new thing to tell people. And a whole lot of people followed. And even me saying this could have, could have one of them look for me to kill me for saying that ain't true. But it ain't true. But Muhammad did it. Then there was another one who came along. And, and Brigham, Brigham Young and all these people, they came up with something. That's a little different than what you've been taught. There have been many who say they had visions and saw Christ and saw this and saw that. But I want you to know that you don't have to worry about seeing him. Every eye shall behold him. Any one person tell you <laughs> they seen him around the street somewhere, you better say, no, I, 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 we all going to see him when he come back. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can't believe that you saw something and I'm sitting here waiting for him every day. He said he's going to come back like lightning. Yeah. See, that's the God you're waiting for right now. But I want to give you some of these signs. And one is many will be deceived. So if you're sitting here and you wonder, how can some people believe a lie, a great lie? They are deceived. And here we are, everybody's trying to make sense of them. I see them on TV giving them mics and say, did you know this? Why do you believe this? But they are deceived. Mm. Deceived means I believe a lie. Yeah. We got a taste of that in America. People believe a lie. And you say, what's wrong with them? No, you pray for them like I do every single day. That God would deliver them. Because the deceiver, he's not somebody you see, and it's not a person. It's the devil who's blinding their eyes. And they won't believe the truth. You say, is that number one? Is that in the last days people will be deceived? That's the number one thing that you're going to see in the last days. I've never been on Facebook, people. I don't even know how to do it. Because I never did like that little man that had Facebook. Zuckerberg. I've always thought, I mean, I'm sorry, just on my, I thought he was a devil. I, you could ask my wife, I said, that's a devil. I, I, I'm not telling you not to be on it. You just control it. Don't let him control it. Okay? So we got all these people believing stuff on Facebook. It could be a good thing, huh? Connected friends and, and relative, but the Satan uses the good, and by deceiving people, he uses it to deceive. So that's the biggest thing: do not be deceived, people. Yes. Yes. And the multitude of counselor is safety. Yes. Go talk to somebody. If you believe a lie and you think it's a lie, you go talk to someone. Hallelujah. Yes. But look at number two. The second thing I want want you to know that men, not only will many come in this name. And, be, and deceive many. He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Man, we've had the worst wars in the 20th century the world has ever seen. World War I, World War II, and many wars after that, right? Korea, Vietnam. Wars as I speak now. Killing children. Doing all kinds of things. And there are more rumors, there are going to be more wars. China's threatening Taiwan, but you know, I say, don't you be alone by that. See, he, what he's telling you with all these things, just keep your eyes on the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your eyes on him. Man will disappoint you, don't you? Be keep your eye on him. Yeah. Keep your eye on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it, it, that way you won't be deceived. You have to know the word. Come to church. Know the word. Read the word. Study the word. Hallelujah. So you won't be easily deceived. And the third thing I want you to see, I'm going to go to my notes now. Nation will rise up against nation. You know, that's, that's not nation like the United States going to rise up against Russia. That's wars and rumors of wars. But nation like peoples. Black against white. And Chinese against Japanese. And just ethnic groups against ethnic groups. Isn't that terrible? In the last days. And then he says... And you know, you can read them as you go. Here, I'm just reading from my notes for the sake of time. Famines and earthquakes will come. Famine. Have you seen the pictures? Children starving. Even in this country, with all those things, children are starving. And people want to make a lot of money, but they don't want to feed the children. I laugh about it sometimes, but it's not funny. People will feed their dogs first. I saw a commercial where a dog had gourmet food. And I was looking at that food like, and a cat too. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm from the country. And I'm like, uh, uh. We have gone overboard when people are starving and dogs can eat gourmet. Amen. Think about it. I, don't, I, I like dogs. But I like, I like pets. But the truth of the matter is, I like people more. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all like people more? Okay, now, if I don't see your hand, you like dogs better than people. Raise your hand now, Did you raise your hand? I'm glad you 
glad he's sitting there today. I got somebody to pick up. <laughs> Listen, I want you to know another thing. Uh, uh, he said you're going to be persecuted and put to death and hated by the world. The apostles mostly were put to death. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Many people were martyred. Preachers who preach the truth are often threatened. You can't preach the gospel and be afraid. People have been shot at the pulpit. Martin Luther King's wife, I think she was playing the piano when she was shot. Persecution and hatred against the church is coming. Don't you worry about it. And you say, well, why people don't like me? Well, look where you are this morning. Amen. You say, well, I, I, there must be something about me. <laughs> and it sure ain't your deodorant, trust me. If people don't like you, trust me, it's because they see something in you. You better believe it. Yeah. And you better know who you are so you don't worry about what people think. Right? Listen, listen to me. Many will turn from the faith and, and fall away and betray others. That's a falling away from the faith. People have given up on, on church, on Jesus. They've given up. Look at the generation of our young people today, sadly enough. We've been, we used to, when the first church first started, we had so many young people. Yes. And they gradually just start falling away. We're already having a fall in the way. How many of us are praying for children and cousins and friends and neighbors, young people mostly, even older people who have just given up on God? Not really. Especially young people like Scooter. Y'all really got to pray for that generation. Because the longer it's taking God to come, people are saying, how do you know he coming? He ain't coming yet. But you better say, if he say he coming, he come, he come. He come. I'm going to be taken. Hallelujah. Listen, false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Did you know that? That's down in verse 11. False prophets, they will tell you anything. They tell you, oh, Jesus is, is right down the street on the corner there at the dream club. Just go next door. You can find him right there. And open your palm up and he'll read it for you. They tell you your future. Or you can watch some people coming on TV late at night who say, if you need a boyfriend, I'll find you one. You need a girlfriend, if you want to know if that's the right person for you to marry, I can give you that information too. False prophets are all over the place right now. All over the place. Our children don't have a chance. Somebody's always trying to prophesy and tell them something about the future that might not be God. Amen. Wickedness will increase and love of most will grow what? Old. If you, you know, I like to love people. Period. Period. If I meet you, my wife will tell you, my children will tell you, my first inclination is, you okay with me? I don't know if you got a knife to kill me. I don't know if you don't like me. All I know is, I can't help but love you just the way you are. Hallelujah. I'm not here to change nobody. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Yeah. But I'm here to love somebody. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. See, Christians don't go around judging everybody. They just love everybody. Because if you get into who got what and who's that and who's that, you're going to be one confused person. Because the devil can come as an angel of light. Yeah. 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 And you'd be sticking around devils because you're judging people by the wrong standard. Mm -hmm. Listen, love will grow cold. People can stab their own daddies and moms. Mm -hmm. I went to school with a guy, I couldn't believe it. The man killed his mother. And then they say he was getting out of jail. I said, no, don't let him out of jail. <laughs> But listen, love grows cold when a man can kill his own mama. Hallelujah. Don't you think that's pretty cold? Don't you think? You don't get no colder than that. Mm -hmm. People throwing their children in the river. Mm -hmm. Hello. You think that's a sign of the times? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's signs of the time. And he says, and this gospel 
move of the kingdom of God. That's down in verse 14. This gospel will be preached to all nations, to all people groups, to Chinese, to Africans, to Australians, to Indians. This, this gospel will pre be preached to all of them. Do you know that's pretty much has been done? This gospel has been preached. And then I want you to read with me, go down to verse 14 again. I mean, 24, 14, you there? Yeah. We're going to begin reading again from there. Y'all bear with me. Not my usual message, but I preach what God tells me to, so there's a reason. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then what will happen? The end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop uh, go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it would be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, there he is, or do not, do not believe it. For the false prophet messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. Now Jesus is mixing up all the times that are left. You know, Jerusalem was destroyed about 40 years after Christ was killed on the cross. And false prophets and so forth, they, they were alive and all over the place. But he's likening that to the last days too. So when the end comes, you're not going to be here when the desolation that he's talking about from the book of Daniel is in the temple of God. See, that is why when the gospel is preached, he said it's the end. It's the end because he's taking his people up. But when the evil one has manifested himself and people begin to worship him, you should not be here. But there will be people who will realize they didn't go when God came. But they still believe. Yes. And they're going to go through great hardship during that time because they weren't watching and waiting for him. You be watchful and waiting. So when that day comes, you'll be taken. When the end comes, you won't be gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there is going to be an elect, people who believe, but they were left because they weren't waiting. They weren't watchful. See, this is a serious thing, y'all. It's so bad when we have to see movies where they snatched off the planes and all that. But I want you to know, whatever Jesus says, and all this is mostly in red, chapter 24, it's going to come to pass. Don't you get so disillusioned and so wrapped up in this world that you think that's just a bunch of science fiction. People, please, listen to me. I'm as logical as they can get. But once you believe the word and you have seen it in action in your life and saw God do what he says he's going to do all the time, yeah. you ain't going to never not believe the word. I'm telling you what I believe. When the end comes, you will not be here. Yeah. And if you die before the end, you have to turn that. First Thessalonians chapter 4 say, the dead in Christ will be with him, and you will be caught up. He's going to take you up with him. Today, I want you to remember this. Enoch walked with God. You have to turn that in Genesis chapter 5. And the Bible says he was no more. God had took him. Walk with God means Enoch lived according to the word, according to doing what is right before God. 
You know, Elijah was taken up in a chariot, fiery chariot, whole, taken up. You know, Paul was caught up to the third heaven. He saw things that he cannot tell anybody what he saw. Things that were unspeakable. Jesus was ascended into heaven because he was God himself. He just went back. Today, there is a place for you that he has set up for you in his father's house. And that place is not an earthly place. It's the kingdom of the living God. There's a ruler there, and you don't have to vote for him. He is Jesus Christ, the son of God. God doesn't want anyone to miss him, his coming. You know, he said, I'll be lifted up. I want to draw all men unto me. That's his desire. He don't want, I don't know what your worst enemy is. God don't want that person to fail. Today, I have good news. And we can get, begin to get some worship here. I want you to prepare your heart for something. Every day when you see me, every day when you see your children, every time you come to church, look for Jesus. Don't leave here thinking, oh, I, I don't know when he's coming. No. You came to church this morning and you're faithful. He is faithful. Yes. He will come back for you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Today, I don't want you going about your business saying, I'm going to just sit here in church till he comes. No, go on about your business. He knows who you are. When he comes, he will take you. And he's going to leave somebody else. The sad thing about it, our prayer is not your neighbor or your friend. You better tell somebody the good news. Yes. That gospel yes. should be preached to all nations. Yes. And all yes. Today I got good news. I want to be taken. I don't want to just go up. I want to be taken up. Yes. Hallelujah. Because only those God going to receive. If you come in there any other way, He's going to banish you from the banquet. The people he invited, he's going to take them. You've been invited. You grab hold of Jesus. You believe, and you should look for him any day. Be watchful. Say, I'm going to be watchful. I'm going to be watchful. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Hey, look, people, please do this. Be watchful and pray. Don't you believe no lie. Don't you get deceived. Don't you give no false prophet that somebody is the Messiah and he ain't. When he comes back, when the end comes, he's coming back for you. And when the enemy is manifested and to tell people he's God, you won't be here. But if you're a Christian and you missed it because you weren't watching and you weren't looking for him, don't worry. He'll shorten those days, the days of evil, so that his elect can be saved. Y'all yeah. understand what I preach? Yeah. Hallelujah. So get your heart ready for communion. And I want you to just remember this. But don't walk in fear and don't say, oh, no, pastor said God coming back. No. <laughs> Live your life to the fullest. Yeah. What did Jesus tell you to do? I give you life yeah. and life more abundant. If you got to worry about where you're going, you got something to get right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it's okay. Just live, but don't forget. Live, but remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is with us. Today, when we get ready to prepare your heart for communion, I just want you to be ready. Say, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. This day and every day, tell me. In Jesus' name.